So, I hadn't gone to the pawn shop in a while. Let me move this down just a little bit. And I went over to, because I, I look through their records sometimes, but they don't usually have a lot. But I looked through it again to see if they had some really interesting things at least. And yeah, they did. I picked up four records for two dollars. They're 50 cents apiece. The rest was mostly uh, like chorus music and Christmas music. Not a whole lot else. Some classic mu classical music I think would have been kind of cool, but I think these are probably the, the best ones. And I have listened to them all, so I was going to talk them about talk about them a little bit and the first one is this one I I'd, I'd actually seen it a bunch of times because I'd seen a lot of uh, like rap music and stuff but I never thought to to pick any up because lots of times it is good and I picked this one up it's a single and it's got two songs and on both sides it has a dirty and clean version and an instrumental with chorus dirty version and a clean version of this one and it's boo blades it doesn't have much on it really i think it was sort of a a promo type thing because when i looked it up on youtube yeah they have a lot more music but there's only one of these songs on youtube not the not the other one now on side a it has hands up Dirty, clean, and then hands up instrumental with chorus, dirty. And then side B has gangsta, dirty, clean, and then gangsta with chorus, clean. Which is weird that it has both, in, but the chorus one of this one is clean, the other one is dirty. Both versions are obviously better at the dirty ones. But yeah, both songs were, were really, were kind of funny, but they are really good too. I think, hmm, I think I might have liked the hands up one better than the other one, but they're, they're both equally good. Like, I was, I was pretty surprised. I like picking up random stuff, but yeah, on YouTube, they do have music on there, and uh, the hands up song is actually on there, but not the gangsta one. And the next one is Beethoven's Symphony Number no. Three, E flat major, uh, op opus, yeah, opus fifty five, Eroica, I think it's pronounced, by the George Solti conducting the Vienna Philharmonic Orchestra. It's a London full frequency stereophonic sound. I'm pretty sure I have a few stereophonic. Oh, I just noticed that it said that on the back. Play this record only on stereophonic equipment. And as far as I remember, this is the one that's... Yeah, it's the really heavy... Uh, the really heavy grade. Which I only have a few like that. Here's the back. Hopefully that comes out pretty good. But it has... Uh, Old, it has some read down on it, but then it has the first movement, the second movement, <laughs> third movement, and fourth movement. Let's see, Allegro, Conbrio, Marcia, Funebre, Adagio, Asai, uh, Scherzo, Allegro, Vivis, Trio, Scherzo. I'm not sure if you, that's Vivace or the vase. I'm not sure of that word. And finale is Allegro, Molto, Poco, Adante, Presto. This London FFSS long playing record was recorded stereophonically under an exclusive process that bears the trademark. 
Oh yeah, I didn't show the record of that one. It just has a white label on it. But this one has a pretty cool cover on it. Full frequency range recording. It's a pretty nice sleeve. It has kind of a almost bubbly paper inside. And then it has a symbol of sound progress. And then it talks about the disc, kind of. The greatest single advance in sound reproduction since invention of the phonograph was FFRR, produced on 78 RPM discs shortly after World War II. Now, the first one, it was a bit scratched, so it, it played alright, but it had a lot of popping. So I probably won't play it a lot. And this one, it it plays really nice. Because all of them have a bit of, a bit of scratches. But the two that had the most play alright, except for that one, pops a lot. But yeah, I thought this was just a really cool cover too. Full frequency range recording. And there is like another Beethoven one. There was um oh man I can't remember what the other one was now but there's a couple other classic ones that I might get. Now this one's an interesting one because I have one that has train sounds. And it's basically just recordings of the trains driving around. But this one actually has kind of a, a train leaving and returning station on both sides. It has music in between that has to do with, like, uh, trains and stuff like that. And it's songs and sounds of the great days of steam, an American heritage record. And this one... And this other one I have had a uh, plastic on it, but it was pretty ratty, so I took it off and wiped it down. So it's an actually a pretty good cover. But my favorite song on here I think has to be 900 Miles by New Christy Minstrels. Remember if there was something interesting about it on here. The sounds from the bygone era of steam railroading heard on this record were provided by O. Winston Link Railway Productions. Oh, yeah, 1975 CBS Inc. Huh. Yeah, I didn't look to see if. Kind of made this one. Stereophonic, apparently. It's the only brand that's really on that. But yeah, this one's a really good one. Plays really nice, too. Make sure they don't slide off the couch. The next one is a Stereo Spectrum Design Records Spectrosonic Sound. They like to make up a lot of stereo and sonic words in these. But yeah, this is the other heavy one. And it even says, uh, long play, 33 and one third long. But it's Clyde McCoy. The golden era of the sugar blues. Copyright by Pickwick International. And it mostly has just instrumental. This one here, um, let's see. I'm sure it's Blue Fantasy when I listen to it. There's one or two that do have lyrics, but otherwise it's like, it's like dance music. And when I was reading the back here, it said that, uh, his parents were active in the famous Hatfield and McCoy feud. Obviously, his last name's McCoy. 
And I noticed also it says NBC. So it's probably been played on like radio shows and stuff. I think this this one and this one I I kind of want to get oh no wait this one did have a paper sleeve I don't remember if it did or not I really need to get newer sleeves for some of these and plastics for them but I just haven't been able to yet but yeah this one's the other really heavy disc in a thentathonic stereo process. Wow, there's just so many different stereo sonic words on here. But I like its little read down of spectrosonic sound. Is the ultimate in high fidelity. Re. Rec I mean, not re recording. Recording studios both here and in Europe are chosen for sound and technical excellence. Telefunken. RCA, Altec, and CAPS condenser microphones are used either singly or in battery to transfer all of the shadings of the music to the Ampex Model 300 tape recorders. These recorders produce a low frequency limit of 16 CPS. And then it just, you know, keeps going on. The masters are cut on scully lace with Westrex feedback cutters. All sorts of words I'm not sure are real. But yeah. This one's a really nice one. And it's in really good condition too. Well, in a few places it's not. But like I said, it was mostly covered in plastic. So. That one and this one are, are quite nice. So I had Clyde McCoy. Songs and Sounds of the Great Days of Steam. Oh, and also like on the, uh, like when the train loads and exits and stuff, the guy says like where it's going, like, uh, like where it stopped and where it's going, which I thought was kind of cool. And yeah, Beethoven. I think it's Eroica, because it's kind of like saying erotica, but without the T. And then we have Boo Blades, was, which was actually quite good. I got a couple thing, a couple other things for a few dollars, but I mainly wanted to show those records off. And I listened to them, and I really liked, I really liked them too. Ooh, got some gas suddenly. But yeah, that's uh, about all for today. So until next time. I'll see you guys later.